and that I, I am the river captain, make no mistake about that. I was a river captain yesterday, and I am today, and I will be tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, there will be no boat that precedes the river captain down the river. Any boat that goes in front of the river captain tomorrow is going to be torpedoed by the Flathead Navy. <laughs>
This is a time now, today, to pause and give thanks to the river, to all the water. One of the things that, that keeps coming back to me is the thing, one of the things that I learned when I was in the seminary, and they talk about water as living water. I see our river as living water. I see our river as we would see another person. And it's not something that we can take and manipulate. It's sacred water. I rode the road over here on the other side of the river the other day. And it was hectic going up, or go, going up the river. But somehow I got away from the students and the uh, teepee setups and was coming down the river by myself. And I was thinking about this day, today, and what I would say. And the river took me away. It's immense. The land around it looks like hard land. But when you get closer to it and can examine the little things that grow, the kinds of grasses, flowers, birds, the air, the sun, the Mission Mountain. It takes you where it takes you. And my thought, and my thought went, went back to Gray, went back to Black Elk. And it seemed like it was getting towards the end of the book when he was taking Nihard back to the place where he had his major vision. And he pointed over to Harney Peak. And he said, that's where I had my major vision. That is the center of the universe. And it seems like he paused for a second, at least he did for me, and may have even laughed for me. And he said, but then, Wherever you are is the center of the universe. And so, on my ride down the river, I felt this, that I was, in fact, at the center of the universe. the river. We are the willow. We are made out of the same clay as these riverbanks. And the buffalo are singing and they aren't singing home, home on the rain.
those are the thoughts that I'd like to share with you. I've got two poems that I'd like to read for you. The first one is called Flathead River Creation. And it's for the student of the Two Eagle River School. You say old days fold into one another and new days seem the same. But each moment shifts like the sun Nothing will be the same as this. When wind breathes the flathead alive, and you are the center for this instant, for all. You are the creation of the universe one more time. And the second one, I talk a little bit about who we are, and I call it Dixon Direction. Directions are simple here. The geese know where to go and eagles fly. But sometimes you get lost on wrong roads. Then when you come to school, you seek from this high window and find living river, red willow, white aspen, old juniper and pine. This is you and bright clay cliffs fix the stars. presentation. I'd like to thank all of the people that could be here this afternoon. I think that, uh, that your interest will save the river.
She's strong enough. I like filet of sole better. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Filet of sole, that's what would sound like, isn't it? I hope everybody likes fried puppy. Fried puppy? Fried puppy? He's trying to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think you guys should taste it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on, taste it. Wait, wait till we get some water. Add one more. No. <laughs> this chef gets carried away. You know how to cook that thing. You're cooking over there. We're Italian. Can't you tell? I know, but I told him to stop putting all those things on. Who's cooking here? You or me, Greta? <laughs> Well, Where the hell were you at the beginning? Cook. I offered to cook. I did. Who were you when we needed you? I was floating down the river, <laughs> you know, risking life and limb <laughs> with a crazy black seed in a Cinnabon. <laughs> One flathead in the middle. <laughs> so what you oh, come here. Come on, we got this puppy ready for you. Oh, fantasy. Let's check you out. Come here, puppy. Let's check you out. What's his name? Thanksgiving? <laughs> 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 his name is Flathead River Float. We're is his cook name Old Boy? <laughs> his name is <laughs> the first sacrificial <laughs> sacrificial <laughs> dog. <laughs> Wait till the water comes to a boil. <laughs> right now we need some flames to singe him with. <laughs> Do you need a rope to choke him? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> got it down to it. Just tie a little rope around here and hang him there and just pull his tail. Oh, yeah, I think so. He's staring with his tail. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you heard it, Roy. You heard it on the at one time. That's what you do. <laughs> This community, in the state, in this country, as long as I have anything to say about it, those dams will never be built, that pipeline will never be built across my reservation, those power lines will not go across, and this will be a place for Flathead and Kootenai 
and it will only get bigger and it will only get stronger because we are not going to die and we are not going to blow away in the wind. But I don't care what happens. The battle lines have been drawn and that I may go, but others will take my place because that too is the sacred circle. For all of you who are interested, and who have a sincere interest in saving something, you can do it. But it's not going to be easy. The river belongs to the tribe, the bed in the banks, but it also belongs to a nation. And you are part of that nation. So if I have to ask you for help, then this is the first time that I will ask you. It will not be the last. <laughs>